watching the Geordie Wine Guide and we're here at the Wine Car Boot and I'm with the main organiser, Ruth. Hello. Hello. Nice Hi. to see you. Thank you for coming. So what's this all about then? It's like a car boot fair but with wine. So yeah, pretty much. So it's all the stalls, instead of being people bring stuff from their house, they don't want. We've got independent wine shops, uh, plus a few producers um, and it's to get the general public who spend far too much time buying wine in the supermarket to meet their local wine shops. You can taste, um, you can drink in, buy the glass or bottle, you can shop to take home. Um, and there's just a huge range of delicious stuff here that's hopefully more exciting um, and more interesting to drink than, than the stuff people buy from the supermarket. So if you're buying wine every day and you're sick of the same old stuff and you want to try something new from a smaller merchant, this is the place to discover it. So it's, it's tasting your way out the supermarket is the it headline, is, isn't it? Indeed, absolutely. And we really do have, there's, there's great varieties and styles that you'll find in the supermarket. So there's lots that people would recognise, but maybe from smaller producers who are really making their wines by hand. Um, but there's also a, just a generally a bigger variety and you can chat to people who buy the wine. So we've got a few winemakers here as well. So there's a lot more sort of contact. You're not just buying something random off the shelf. Um, but I say we've got every colour, every style, um, and every kind of format as well. So. Brilliant. Well, this is it, the wine car boot. Let's see how it goes. So, wine car boot was started nine years ago, I think, by Ruth, Ruth and Ruth, or Ruth Squared, as they're called. Um, and it was kind of a thing to try and get people to drink not just wine from the supermarket. It's now got loads of traders. It's had like over 104 different traders, something ridiculous. Um, and people just come show wine and people can buy the takeaway. Uh, so for most traders like myself, we aim for better value wines. So stuff like 14 quid lighter red from Greece or like 11 quid rosé, bargain fucking basement uh, from down Portugal. Um, and then there's always like an under the table wine that people do. Sometimes it's like... Oh, like, shows you under the table wine. Well, the under the table wine is... A massive large <laughs> bottle of Barger from Dirk Neupel. So that's just gear, like just why not? Because that's a real under the table one. And that is mega. And we've got some to taste as well. Is that Neuport? Yeah, the big boy. The best man there is to make wine really across the world. And tea, he makes tea as well. Can we see your nutsack? Yes, you can. We're looking at summer trends today. Summer trends. What are people drinking in the summer? So big, for me, there's only two things I need in the summer, and that is sugar and acid. So any wines are giving me, you know, a bit more residual sugar, a bit more acid than right. I keep. So fresh wines. Fresh wines, like um, nothing too things, heavy. Some off dry shannons, like that. That's, that's what I'm feeling. Thing, something to keep me in the yeah. mood. What about red wines? Do you drink them in the hot weather? Yes, but I'm much fussier. Got to right. have something that's um, a bit lighter, you know, less tannins, a bit more acid, you know, your Beaujolais, uh, a few of those sexy Italian numbers. What about sexy you Italian numbers. <laughs> We're here with sommelier and Greek wine expert, Anya. Hello everyone, how are you guys? So we're here to try some of the Greek wines I have and excited to talk about. So yeah, let's start. So when you're drinking uh, wine in this sort of heat, it's like 33 degrees today. What Greek wines are we going to be looking at? Is it rosés or have you got some reds as well? Yes, I have some uh, like a blue blue fresh reds uh, from those quits. And it's nice. You love this one, don't you? It's really lovely. I put it in the ice and it's so fresh. It's such a nice uh, thin skin, thin mavro. It's really lovely. That's one of the wines of the show, that. Yes. It, yeah, this is my take on uh, like a summer, summer drink. A bit orange as well. It's very orange, not a bit. It's full on orange, but because it's all dry, uh, the tannins are smooth and it's yeah, like really drinking really well in this kind of heat. Will you show us your rosé because it, it's got a really cool bottle? Yes, I will. Where's this from? So this is Attica. So this is a really interesting winemaker, the Autumn Winery. Uh, 
basically this is the pine resin uh, roses we so pine resin used for uh, preservative methods. Uh, basically you add a bit of the pine resin in the fermentation tank for a couple of days and then you don't need to add any sulfites. Uh, and here it's a touch of like rosemary flavour and the grapes were harvested at night. So acidity is really, really present. So therefore, this is what remains, the acidity, not the pine. Pine is not dominant, and it's really smooth and really well made. So I've had a few of the wines with, with the pine resin, and they smell like a Christmas tree. Well, I mean, it has the rosemary, it has the herbaceous kind of touch to it, but they also pine is different, it's different quality. Some of the pines are higher quality, then they are not dominant flavour, and that's what we like. We don't like too dominant wine, is wine. <laughs> Very good. Well, that was, that was Anya from Southern Hi. Wine Roads. Um, so, Honest Grapes is a wine club started by me, uh, Nathan Hill, and my mate Tom Harrow. Um, we're online, so you can buy it in Geordie Land. Um, I'll even deliver it to you because I love Newcastle, Durham, Gateshead, all those Sunderland, Teesside, all those places myself. Can you speak Geordie? I can't speak Geordie, and I would make a terrible impression. Give us your best shot. Like to, Are you I, selling some proper lush wine? I can't even try why I, it just doesn't work with me. Okay. <laughs> We're drinking Clemens Bush. So Clemens, the, Clemens, is the most, Clemens is the most amazing producer in the Mozart. Uh, he and his wife Rita have been friends of mine for over 20 years. Um, and this is his broken sheep for the red slate. And if you look on the foil, it's red. He's got three styles of slate, red, uh, blue and grey slate. And this is from the little bit of the hill, the Pundavisha Marienberg, where the train that goes down to Luxembourg just pops out of a tunnel. And there's a path for the Rotten that comes down. And it, this, this little patch of land is where it goes there. So it's just amazing. It is full of herbs and spices, grapefruit, cinnamon. It smells almost as though it's going to be really sweet. But then on the palate, it's just off dry very rich, almost Alsatian, really voluptuous. The question we've got for you is... £21.60. The question we've got for you, is it going to be good in the summer weather? Yes, 100%. But well, it is now, look. <laughs> I'm here with Imogen from Nectar Wines. We're going to drink some wine in a can. Have you got a glass? No. Let's see it. So this is 100% Carignan from Lodi. Uh, it's a vineyard that was planted 75 years ago. No added sulfur, super simple, super crunchy, delicious. Just landed. So this is Californian wine? Californian. In a can. It smells like proper wine. Do you like it? Yeah, almost too drinkable, I think. A dangerous wine. I mean, in weather like this, you can't get much better than that. Because how much liquid's in one of them cans? Like three. drinking half a bottle, isn't it? Must be 33. 33 seals. Yeah. That's, do you just, think it might be a bit dangerous drinking a whole can in the sun like this? Because you're just very dangerous. It's dangerously good. Very dangerous. So the Lagrappen guys, yeah. they're the pioneers of the Bagnum. They, they've actually trademarked the name Bagnum. They, they were one of the first yeah. people to do it. And it's a great idea, especially in the sustainability conscious world that we're in at the moment this is what people want they want something that's easy to carry around take to Glastonbury and uh, great wine that doesn't oxidize as well so it'll actually last for weeks has anyone taken it to Glastonbury this year do you know oh my god so many people have taken it to Glastonbury it's sold out everyone has sold out all of our stockings are sold out the rosé and people are doing nasty like tricks with it, but I, won't, I can't tell you about those. What, well, like necking it from a height? <laughs> <laughs> what would you like? Having, having showers with it. Do you want <laughs> I'm here with the guys at Passione Vino. Say hello. hello. Going to tell us about this lovely, lovely rosé wine we've got in a massive bottle. This is a very special rosé uh, for red wine drinkers. Yeah. Made out of an indigenous grey variety from Trentino. Yes. Uh, and it's Marzamino, and I, f I can see you really appreciate it. <laughs> I think probably the best thing you can drink in this heat is pet nuts. So it's like a sparkling wine where all of the sediment and stuff is left in the bottle, and you get a bit of a cloudy, sparkly liquid. It's not quite as fizzy as like champagne, but for this summer weather, you want something that's smashable. That's definitely smashable.